This is where bread clips come from. Welcome to Yakima. Located here, the area around Yakima would originally and for most of history be home to many Native American groups, referred to collectively as the people of the plateau. Then in the 1800s, things started to change, like in most of America, as Europeans started to appear in the area. These first Europeans were mostly trappers who looked to hunt game as well. Then in 1847, the first white settlement in the area would be created as the St. Joseph Catholic Mission would be built only a few miles away from where Yakima currently is today. 1855 would change everything for the Yakima Valley though, as a small gold rush would occur, triggering an influx of white prospectors. It wasn't much of a surprise that the natives weren't very big fans of the prospectors running around their land. But they did have the whole weight of the US government behind them, so there wasn't much the natives could do to stop them from it, which led to them begrudgingly agreeing to the Treaty of 1855 that would set up reservations and cede much of their land to the whites. But being that this is rural Washington in the 1800s, there wasn't really much the U.S. government could do to uphold this treaty, and prospectors almost entirely ignored it. Tensions would boil over though later in the year, as the nephew of Kamiakin, the leader of the Yakima, would murder two white prospectors after they'd raped a Yakima woman. This would lead to a series of events that would result in a 14-tribe alliance doing war with the Washington government. The Yakima War could be a whole other video in itself. But for the purposes of this video, the end result was not a victory for the Yakima, and they were forced onto their reservation lands that they hold today. It would take a few years before any other major settlement occurred in the area because there had just been a large war, and people weren't too inclined to go hang out there. Eventually though, it was realized that the land had perfect conditions for cattle ranching as well as growing crops, which caused an influx of settlers. By the end of 1870, Yakima would be a small village at the mouth of the Anatum River. One thing though, this isn't actually Yakima. Let me explain. The Yakima that you would find on Google Maps is actually four miles north of here. See, by the 1880s, railroads had become a lifeline for the Pacific Northwest, as it was the fastest way to transport goods and people from the West Coast to the far larger East Coast. Presumably, the Yakimanian people would have been delighted by the fact that the Northern Pacific Railroad was finally coming to their town. But then it didn't. The railroad company would decide that the land around Yakima was far too swampy to run lines through, and instead selected a place four miles north where they would build the station. And so North Yakima was created, and people from Yakima were invited to come and join them there. Many of Yakima's largest buildings would be physically picked up and moved for miles to the new Yakima location. Yakima hardliners weren't too much of a big fan of this move though, and at one point somebody planted a stick of dynamite in the Yakima City Signal newspaper building and blew it up in the middle of the night. They then rebuilt in northern Yakima though, so I don't know how much a success that was. A year later in 1886, North Yakima would become incorporated and it would take the Yakima County seat away from Yakima City, cementing itself as the greater of the two. Only a couple years later in the 1890s though, a national recession would begin hitting Yakima as well as much of the rest of the US. And in 1894, North Yakima would see firsthand the labor disputes that would rock the nation. A large group of men attempting to join Coxey's army, which was a protest movement made by unemployed men in Washington DC, were attempting to go there via the North Yakima railroads. Thing is, when they tried to hop a train, a brawl broke out between them and police, resulting in 60 arrests. A couple days later though, the same exact thing would occur, resulting in another 100 arrests. The recession times weren't all bad for Yakima though, as it was the 1890s and the city was just getting its start, many of its first schools, hospitals, and churches would be established during this time. Additionally, in 1894, Yakima would become home to the Washington State Fair, though due to the recession, it would immediately be canceled for a couple of years, but it would then come back. At the turn of the 20th century, Yakima had amassed a population of a couple thousand, and its primary industries were beginning to bear their fruits. Cause cause their primary industry was agriculture and fruits and vegetables and hops, which we'll talk about later. And they were doing really good at it. Additionally, within the first decade, Yakima would gain access to electricity, which would lead to a trolley system being opened in 1906, allowing for easy transport of produce to the trains. 1918 would be when North Yakima, which is the Yakima I've been talking about since I mentioned, that it became a thing, just to make it clear. 
would finally drop the North from its name and just become Yakima. And the original Yakima would change its name to Union Gap, which it still is today. In 1941, a military base called the Yakima Aircraft Artillery Range would open and would later be renamed to the Yakima Training Center. In the 1970s, people would realize that Yakima was great for growing grapes. And so many vineyards to produce wine would be created in the area. Then in 1980, Mount St. Helens would erupt, blanketing the city in ash, darkening the sky, and causing the city's wastewater treatment plant to fail for a while. And that kind of brings us to today. Yakima is still an agricultural giant, producing many crops, including 75% of all hops grown in the United States. Also, recently, Yakima has become a health services hotspot and has taken upon a large tourism industry, partially helped by their large amount of craft breweries, which presumably make their beer from the hops that were previously mentioned. So that's Yakima. You name it, they probably grow it. Thanks for watching. Did I miss an important fact about Yakima, mess up something, or maybe you just want to see a video about your hometown? Put it in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing.